Many people argue about the origin of jazz, and some trace it to Chicago, but many more give its birth in New Orleans. New Orleans was a great melting pot of races and culture that gave away to this new sound that would evolve into jazz. One of the first bands to explore this genre is the Dixieland Jazz Band. They are also the first band to capitalize on the name Dixieland, which is a style known for improvisation. Dixieland has many influences like ragtime, piano, and greatly influenced jazz. Dixieland was a term used to let people know it was all a white band. Another breakthrough artist is Sidney Betchett. He is the first musician to be renowned for playing the soprano jazz, which is now one of the staples of the jazz genre. Betchett worked with Johnny Hodges, who eventually became a jazz legend in his own right with the alto saxophone. During this time, the shift of jazz music went from New Orleans and Chicago. During the Great Northern Migration, jazz came to New York to communities like Harlem. Soon the Harlem Renaissance began. One of the most important figures of the Harlem Renaissance is the Duke. Ellington is a very important character in jazz history. He brought along with him an above average education and talent to jazz and helped develop many other legendary players like Miles Davis. The Duke played jazz with an orchestra and also brought the discipline from classical music. There's no doubt that his biggest contribution is showing everyone how to write in a classical manner many of the songs that they had been playing as improvisation throughout all this time. Billy Strayhorn played for the Duke and popularized bass solos was revolutionary because instead of playing one or two lines like a bassist typically would, Jimmy created new techniques that made people take notice of what bassists were doing and soon many followed. This inspired many sound engineers to create new techniques that would help record this new sound. While Big Bang was an important time for jazz, the American people were on edge because of World War II. Because of this, they began to seek a more aggressive sound in jazz. The answer was bebop. Bebop is a type of music which features song characterized by fast tempo, complex chord progression with a rapid as chord changes and numerous changes of key, instrumental virtuosity, and improvisation based on the combination of harmonic structure. It is also known as an art music instead of entertainment and more of a music to listen instead of music to dance with. The style comes all the way from the mid-1940s, which was developed in the United States. Bebop was mainly developed in the East Coast like New York, where a strong black community was being created with a freedom to express their frustrations through music. Charlie Parker was a highly influential jazz soloist and a leading figure in the development of bebop. Parker was an icon for the hipster subculture and later the bebop generation personifying the jazz musician as an uncompromising artist and intellectual rather than just an entertainer. Parker was a blazing bass virtuoso. He introduced revolutionary harmonic ideas including rapid passing chords. New variants of altered chords and chord substitutions. His tone ranged from clean and penetrating to a sweet and somber. Also playing in Harlem was Dizzy Gillespie. He was one of the greatest American jazz trumpeters, band leader, composer, and occasional singer. He was an improviser who built on the style of Roy Elrich. Dizzy added layers of harmonic complexity to Elrich's style. In the 1940s, he became a major figure in the development of bebop and modern jazz. Thelonious Monk was also making a name for himself as an American jazz pianist and composer. He had a unique improvisational style and made numerous contributions to the standard jazz repertoire.
while bebop was thundering on the east coast and the development was occurring on the west coast. Unlike bebop, much of cool jazz was written ahead of time. In bebop, the emphasis was on the improvised solos. In cool jazz, both the arrangement and the improvised solos were important. The genre definitely was inspired by its soothing California beaches. Miles Davis was described as one of the greatest innovators in jazz. He was one of the most influential and respected figures in the many jazz genres. As an innovative band leader and composer, he began affecting the cool jazz sound and owned it. Miles Davis released The Birth of Cool with his band, and ironically, a new genre was born. Rubeck was known for employing unusual time signatures and superimposing contrasting rhythms, meters, and tonalities in the piano. Jerry Mulligan is known as one of the leading baritone saxophonists in jazz history. He played the saxophone with a light and airy tone in the era of cool jazz. He was also known for being a notable arranger. The East Coast seemed to have an answer to their easy listening genre, so hard bop was born. Hard bop was a look back to the bop genre with a more driving tempo and force. This once again brought the scene to New York. John Coltrane played many different types of jazz, but he was known for his free jazz. It sounds a lot like it's being made up in the moment and the place just go along. Art Blakey formed the Jazz Messengers with Horace Silver in the 1950s playing a driving, aggressive extension of Bob with pronounced blue roots. Horace Silver was an American jazz pianist, composer, and arranger, particularly in the hard bop style, which he helped pioneer in the 1950s. beginning to feel unsatisfied with the limitations that traditional template for jazz had set for them. Seeing the jazz scene go from coast to coast and simply reviving an old sound was not satisfactory for some when it came to the progression strides of jazz. It was in his dissatisfaction that free jazz was created. Cornet Coleman originally intended free jazz as simply an album title, but his growing reputation placed him at the front of jazz innovation and free jazz was only considered a new genre. Eric Dolphy, while most of the free jazz players sounded very serious in their playing, Dolphy's solos often came across as ecstatic and exuberant. His improvisations utilized very wide intervals, a variety of non-musical speech-like sounds in its own logic. freedom to experiment, but were encouraged with the free jazz movement. Instead of challenging traditional template, they focused on adding new instruments like guitars. Miles Davis Band was one, if not the first, to experiment with rock rhythms. Miles Davis in his Bitches Brew CD set the stage for jazz experimentation, which upon their completion of the city would propel many of the members to create their own bands and styles that would influence music till today. Herbie was a legendary piano artist who played with Miles Davis and his band on the Bitches Brew album. In 1998, he rose again with the R&B genre has a membership with the Telonious Monk organization that still tries to pass on the jazz education that he acquired. John McLaugh is a songwriter and musician. He played the guitar and his band had an Eastern and Indian influences. He played with many important artists such as Miles Davis, Graham Bond, Jack Bruce, and Ginger Baker. Michael Brecker is a tenor saxophonist and was the first to incorporate the electronic wind instrument into jazz and did so successfully proving that it can have a place in the genre. After 
After working with Miles Davis, he then went on as a leader of high-energy jazz.